second. All right, Gregory, you're all set. I'm ready. Hold on one second. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my blanket fort. Can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, show me thumbs up. All right, I see thumbs up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my volume down so I'm not really gonna be able to hear you guys until the end when we ask some questions. Um, but I will be watching to see if you guys are following the directions today. So welcome back to my blanket fort. As you guys know, we cannot go outside right now too much. Uh, we're trying to find the fun indoors. So I built myself a fabulous blanket fort. And if you peek through the blanket fort with me, you will see my living room out there. What a bore. But we learned yesterday that if you have just a little bit of magic, you can travel anywhere, especially in your blanket fort. So we just need to find that magic. And yesterday we got a magic note from my cat Isadora. And I wonder if we could get another one today. I wonder, oh, is there something behind me? Is the magic box lit up? Let's see. Ooh, <gasps> ooh, it's all lit up again. Cool. Magic box. So we know what's in here, right? There's just a little bit of magic. Nothing surprising at all going on inside the magic box. Oh, that's odd. It's a gold head scratcher. Is that what this is? It's a back scratcher. It's a, it's a, it's a most, it's a key. It's a gold key. It reminds me of a story. I'm going to hang on to this and we're going to see what the ball of magic has for us today. Let's read it. There's a note, usually a note written by my cat. She's a Montessori cat. She learned to read. Oh, there's the note. Here's what it says. If you want to be invisible, come and find your hat. Love, the cat. I don't know why I listened to her. She wants me to be invisible. Have you ever dreamed of being invisible? Well, I definitely have. So let's head on over to the magic forest. First, we have to count to three. Remember, one, two, three. Do you think it worked? Let's check. Oh my goodness. There is the beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous Fable Forest. Let's head on over together. Woo! Here we are in the Fable Forest. I wonder if my cat's around here somewhere. Isadora, are you over here? Izzy, oh, there you are, my dear. All right. Izzy, why did you write me that note and send me that key? Hmm? Oh, because you want me to practice being invisible. All right, I'm gonna try it. Is he here? She just loves to float. All right, if I were invisible, how would I do it? I probably wouldn't need that. Oh my, it's working. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I'm just like a floating head. Now that is exciting. I wonder what else I can do with my invisibility. I could just be like a smile. That's way really cool, kind of like. Kind of like a Cheshire cat. Izzy's part Cheshire cat. That's why she's able to float and disappear like that. Let's see if I can remove my invisibility spell. Ah! And I have my adventure clothes back on. Very cool, Izzy, thank you so much. That reminds me of a very famous story called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Should we tell the story now? All right, if you want to hear the story, let me see you nod your heads. Let me see you do kind of a weird happy dance, and we will go to the tale of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which starts in a beautiful place, kind of like this, a rustic, bucolic place. Alice and her sisters were on a rowing adventure, you see. They were rowing, rowing, rowing with their friend, Mr. Dodgeson, who went on to be a very famous writer, you might know. Anyway, while they were visiting, it says my internet connection is unstable, is everything good? I'm looking at Amanda. <laughs> okay, just checking. Um, I don't know what that means. So anyway, Alice and her sisters were rowing and they got very tired of rowing. So they went to lay down under a tree and Alice's sister, Ina, began to read a very boring book. It was probably like a, like a Dean Koontz or something like you buy in the airport, one of those books written by like ghost writers, whatever. Anyway, while she was sitting there listening to the very boring book, she began to get kind of, sleepy and kind of doze off a bit. <sighs> oh, sorry. Anyway, the next thing she knew, 
a little white rabbit was scurrying by, kind of like this one, boingy, boingy, boing. Only her rabbit had a jacket on. This rabbit does not have a jacket on. Anyway, this rabbit was very, very busy, and it was like, oh dear, I shall be so late to my furry ears and whiskers. The queen will be very upset if I'm not on time. Now, we all know in New York that if you're 10 or 15 minutes late, that's okay. You can blame it on the subway or whatever you The queen, you cannot be late, it's undeniable. Alice was curious, so she decided to follow that rabbit. So she's following along, tiptoeing behind, sneaking along, wondering where he is going to go, and then shoop, he disappears down a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole. Now, Alice did not go to a Montessori school. No one had ever told her not to jump down a rabbit hole just because you see a rabbit going down there. She didn't know any better. And she was curious. And curiosity is very tricky like that. It is very easy to fall into the trap of being curious. Should Alice jump down the hole? If you think Alice should jump down the hole, let me see you nod your head. It's a story, nothing's gonna happen, right? So she jumped down the hole. Oh, it didn't work, huh? She jumped down the hole and she's falling. And it's really terrifying to be falling down a hole. And this hole was, it was like a pottery barn hole. It had like pottery and, and plants and ficuses. There were little bowls of soap that she was passing. And she's like, ah! and then poof, poof. Her dress just expanded like a great big, uh, what's that word, a parachute. And she's just parachuting her way down, 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 down the rabbit hole like, and as she fell, as she fell, Jefferson Airplane on Spotify played this very famous song. Can you hear it? And she's falling, and she's sampling the marmalade as she falls. And every minute she falls further and farther down, she's like, ooh, am I ever gonna get back? Whoa. Whoa. It was a long, slow fall down the rabbit hole. And you can listen to that song some other time. Hang on, I'll be right back. Come on, silly. Anyway, so she's falling down the rabbit hole, falling, 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 and she lands with a great big thud in this very strange room. This place was bananas. It was just door after door after door after door, and she did not know what to do in this place with all the doors. But then, aha, the key. She saw a key just like this one on top of a table, and she snatched up that key, and she was like, ooh, I wonder which of these doors it's gonna open. And so she tried a door over here, no, locked, it didn't work. Maybe one here, no, maybe one down here. Oh, and she found one that she was able to unlock with the key. How magnificent. And she was like, ooh, I wonder what's inside that door. So she decides to look through the door. And what do you think she saw? Well, what do you think she saw? You think she saw a baking contest going on? No. Do you think she saw a hot air balloon? Nope. She saw the best thing ever. A garden, a beautiful garden. And she looked through the door and she went, ah, oh! and it's well manicured. Alice really, really loved things that were well manicured. The topiaries were perfect and it had little like checkerboard marks on it. And she was like, ah, oh, that is the most beautiful garden I've ever seen in my life. I've got to get in there. So she tried to get through the door. Oh, uh oh. She's too big to fit through the tiny little door. Oh no, she thought. I've just got to get to that manicured garden. Oh, but she didn't fit no matter how she tried. So she had to go back into the hall of doors and pout about it. I don't want to fit in the door. It's not very cool to not be able to fit through the den. Then what do you think she saw? <laughs> she saw a bottle. It was a bottle. And she read the bottle to see if it said poison on it. It did not. It said nutrition facts, calories, 140. Oh, drink me. Drink me. Now, should you drink from strange bottles that you find in random halls of doors at the bottom of rabbit holes, children? No, you should not. But she did. Mmm. 
tastes like mm. cherry custard, bananas, turkey, and hot buttered toast all my favorite foods. And the moment she tasted it, she began to shrink. And she was small enough ah, to fit through the door, but she forgot the key. Oh, I go, well, she forgot the key. Well, what am I gonna do now? So then she found some cake on the floor. Should we eat cake that we find on the floor? Absolutely not, but she did it anyway. Well, she ate the cake and she grew gigantic. She was so big now that she would never ever fit through the door. And she was like, this is the worst day of my life. And she started to cry. <laughs> Can you cry with Alice? Let me hear you really cry. <sighs> and her tears began to fill the room until splash, she fell back into her tears and she was now swimming in the water of her own tears with a bunch of wild animals, including a mouse. And so she followed the mouse out of the pool of tears and she was like oh boy i am soaking wet from my own tears but at least i'm outside maybe i can find that well manicured garden i don't know but all the animals outside were acting loony they were running around in circles having something called a caucus race and so they ran around in circles until all their clothes were dry right and then she was like i have had enough of this madness and then she heard a mysterious voice behind her and it was of course one of my dear friends the cheshire cat now, the Cheshire Cat is a really interesting character because, first of all, he's a cat. Second of all, he's able to turn kind of invisible, like what Isadora was trying to suggest we do earlier today. And the Cheshire Cat was like, where do you think you're going, young lady? And she was like, I hardly know, sir. And the Cheshire Cat was like, hmm, we should think about that. There's many things to see and do in this strange place called Wonderland. Maybe you should go and see my friend, the Duchess. Now the Duchess lived in this very fancy house. So she thanked the cat, as you should. And she went inside to see the Duchess. Now, excuse me, sorry. The Duchess, oh my goodness, I'm gonna sanitize my hands while I tell this part of the story. Oh my goodness, into my elbow, oh my. Now the Duchess's cook loved to cook with pepper. So everybody was sneezing inside the house, including this horrifying baby that she had. And the Duchess was just like, when you have a baby, you must rock it very roughly until it cries. And Alice was like, no, you mustn't. And the cook was like, you must put Peppa in the baby's food. And Alice was like, no, you must not. That's not how you take care of a baby. So Alice decided to take care of the baby. She took the baby outside with her and it transformed into a pig. I don't know why, it just did. But it was a cute little pig. And Alice let the pig go. She said, you know, it wouldn't have been a very cute child, but it makes a beautiful, lovely pig. And she was very happy to have helped the baby. And she let it go when it went off with the other pigs. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then the Cheshire cat came back. And the cat said, by the by, what became of the baby? And Alice was like, oh, it turned into a pig. And the cat was like, hmm, interesting predicament. Why don't you go to the mad tea party now? If you've ever been to a tea party, you know that they can be a little serious and a little boring at times. This one was anything but. This one was banana cakes. Can you say that? Banana cakes. It was a banana cakes tea party. It was bananas. There was a Mad Hatter, a March Hare, a Dormouse, and Alice. And they were having a lovely time so she could turn around to the tea party and have some tea and a little bit of a scone. It was really crazy though. They were acting like loons. The Mad Hatter was like, why is a raven like a writing desk? And the March Hare was just like, have some more tea. And Alice was like, I haven't had any tea really yet, so I can't have more. Well, it's very easy to take more than another. It was just insane. And they were doing rhymes and they were acting like absolute loons. And Alice was like, oh, oh. I just want to get into that well manicured garden. It's the only thing I want to do is see some topiaries and some roses. I gotta get out of here. So she left the tea party behind. She took one little nibble of a scone. It was delicious. And she walked away. Oh, oh no, she realized. Every time I eat something here, I grow or I shrink. Now I'm super tiny. Can you get super tiny with me? We're so small, but the mushrooms look like great big crazy trees. 
And then she hears a voice say, who are you? And she sees a big caterpillar on a mushroom. And the caterpillar is like, explain yourself, little girl. And she's like, I can't. I've been so many different sizes today. I hardly even know who I am anymore. It's been a very strange day, Mr. Caterpillar. And the caterpillar says to her very wisely, one side will make you grow larger. One side will make you grow smaller. He's talking about the mushroom, of course. So she takes the mushroom. She tastes a little bit of it, and she grows back to her normal size. So she says, oh, this is a valuable mushroom. I am going to hang on to it. She puts it in the pocket of her dungarees or whatever she wore that day, and she moves on, and then she finds herself ooh, lost in the Tulgy Wood. The Tulgy Wood is a dark, creepy, sinister place, and she sits down, and she's like, oh. <laughs> I'm my way out of this crazy place. I just wanted to follow a rabbit and see a garden, like anybody would. And then who should appear but the Cheshire Cat, her dear friend. And he said, my dear, you've been invited by the Queen of Hearts to play croquet. You must come post haste. She doesn't like when people are late. So she followed him into, ah! The well manicured garden. Yes, let's do a happy dance. We are in the manicured garden. We're in the garden. We're in the garden. Weird. Some of the roses are white. Some of them have been painted red. Why are the roses painted red? She wonders. That is bizarre stuff. And then before she can get the answer to her question, da -da -da -da, ladies and gentlemen, the queen. The queen was here. The queen of hearts was here, in fact. And if you've never met the queen of hearts, lucky you, because she's a little nuts. She walks around going, who's been painting my roses red? I don't like my roses painted red. And who is this little girl over here? She's like, I'm Alice, if it please your majesty. And she's like, it does not mean you will play croquet. And they played croquet with flamingos and hedgehogs. And I was subsequently very disappointed when my family had a croquet game over the summer once when I was six because I thought there would be flamingos and hedgehogs and there were not. Um, so this isn't how you're supposed to play, but I thought you were. Anyway, the game was bananas crazy. So Alice is like gonna sneak away through this magic door tree and the queen is like, stop! Someone has stolen my tarts. We must have ba -ba -ba -boom, a trial. A trial. Alice had never been in a trial before. She'd never even done jury duty before. So she's walking down the hallway of the very serious courtroom and she approaches the bench and she's all kinds of nervous. Trials are super serious most of the time. And there at the trial, they're like, the queen of hearts had some tarts all on a summer's day. Somebody stole them and took them clean away. And everyone pointed to Alice. They said, she took the tarts. Do you think Alice took the tarts? Did she, did she steal those tarts? She, I don't know, I don't, there was no surveillance footage or anything. There was really no evidence to prove it or to prove that she didn't do it. So it was a really tricky situation. So Alice stood before the queen and she was like, your majesty, I didn't do it. And she ate some of her mushroom and she got really, really big, as big as the queen. And the queen looked at her and said, little girl, stop growing right now. And Alice said, no. And the queen said, what did you say, little girl? And she said, I will not stop growing children grow, your majesty. There's no getting around that, no matter how queenly you may be. And the queen said, either you or your head must be off. Off of her head! And the queen is shouting off of her head. Alice is running from the palace guards. She's running this way and that. She doesn't know what to do with herself. The Cheshire Cat appears, thankfully, and says, Alice, follow me. I can get you out of here. I'll make you invisible. So Alice is partially invisible and she's following him one way, following him the other way. They're trying to escape. Then all the cards come rushing at Alice's head. And she's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, la. Uh. And then all the cards turn in to tree leaves. And she realizes that she is fast asleep at home, still listening to her sister read that boring Dean Koontz book. <gasps> and she thinks it was all a dream. So she goes for a walk in the forest. And as she's walking, she thinks for just a moment that she sees the smile of a Cheshire cat. 
and the wink of a white rabbit. And that, my friends, is the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland. Ta-da! All right, my friends, it is now time to head back to my house and head back over to the blanket fort. And I want to know what you thought of that story. I want to know if you have ideas for other stories. And I want to hear from you. So I'm going to pass it off to Jeff or Amanda, somebody else. Hi. Hi, everybody. Arena and I are here. Let's give Gregory a big hand for a wonderful story today. Thank You'll you, have it so well. <laughs> I am going to unmute everyone so that you can say hello until about 11.20 or so until we close the room and come back tomorrow. And as a reminder, Gregory will be here every day at 11. So we hope to see you again tomorrow. Are you ready? <laughs> have a story you want to hear next time. If you make a picture that you want to share, Oh, Eden, I see your picture. I know. Very cool. Eden, you should email where to look for some many of you. Hi, Gush. Hi. Clarice. Hi. Steve. Hi, Maya. Hey, Vanderbilt. Hi. Hi. Melina. Hiroto. Hi, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hi. 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 I see Mateo. Hi, 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 <laughs> All right, my friends. Hi, Miss Katie. Oh, wow. I hope I see hi to everybody. Oh, wow. I hope I see everybody. We'll be signing off now. We can start by song.